so when I, you know, I grew up wrestling. Um, my dad passed away when I was young, but uh, thankfully I got this amazing stepfather that, you know, he was always into martial arts and stuff like that and boxing and wrestling and he wrestled college. Okay. So, you know, for Christmas, we'd always get like boxing gloves and uh, it's weird. He's actually the first one that knocked me out. <laughs> I remember, it happens. You know, yeah. I remember sparring with him in like eighth grade and just getting hit by a man like, oh, but uh, he was tough, man. You know, yeah. and, uh, anyways, he was, you know, really into the UFC when it first started. They were mm. just, you know, Dave, you got to check this out. And, uh, you know, with me doing all the wrestling stuff, the, mm -hmm. There wasn't too many schools in town. There was like a Sambo school, you know, but um, wow, you could tap the instructor the first day when you're like 16. Mm. It's probably not, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, probably not the real deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we stayed there for a little bit. And then finally, I had a cousin uh, named Andre Kabazi. Mm. And they're, both of my cousins, uh, him and his son are black belts now, but he was taking private lessons from Half Gracie. Oh, okay. And I just... You know, I knew I needed to get that kind of training. So finally, you know, I walked in there one day and I started training with Half, mm -hmm. and uh, it was amazing. You know, just idolizing the guy and sure, you know, seeing him fight. It, it was like a dream come true. Um, yeah. Something happened where he took over the school in uh, Mountain View, and then Caesar came back to the Pleasant Hill School, and then you know, one day all of a sudden Caesar was my coach then which was cool. And I, I, I just stayed with Caesar. Um, a lot of people left and went with Half, but I, uh, I stayed with Caesar and I stayed mm -hmm. in that location and, mm -hmm. uh, shit, I guess that's all she wrote. You know, I just kept training yeah. and training. What was it about? Um, I'm really fascinated, like uh, with a couple of things about that, uh, that whole era in your life, really, because obviously timing and all these circumstances came together where you and ultimately all these guys, diverged on this one place and it became the scrap pack later but like i'm just fascinated with like what was it about maybe caesar's teaching or something that attracted all you young competitive guys like you jake nick nate what was that environment like how did that happen it can it, does that make sense yeah well you know basically when uh, gracie jiu-jitsu first started there wasn't that many academies around mm. so People would come from Sacramento. They'd commute a couple hours to get the Caesars. They would come from Stockton. They would come from all over. And a lot yeah. of them were like uh, karate instructors. Wow. You know, they were kind of thinking like, we need to get our belt so we can gotcha. add this to our programs. So with a lot of those people coming in, they all eventually had their own fighters of their own. Mm. So, you know, the umbrella got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And with all the uh, fighters they produced, we all just kind of came together, you know? Yeah, sure. Um, what yeah. was weird is it just kind of shows you how life works as, uh, you know, Half Gracie at the time, he had one of the craziest teams ever, you know, uh, Kurt Osiander left and went with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he had all the Penn brothers. Mm. Uh, man, he just had Cameron Earl. He had these legends that mm -hmm. were just, he had on uh, all the uh, on the mat guys. He mm. his team was just so solid, and you know we had a very young team, young. and we just stayed loyal and we stayed with our team. And it's just funny how it worked. I think mm. every one of us fought for a title in the UFC. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's yeah. it's so it's crazy because uh, and I, I know you know that.